Labdien cienījamie skatītāji, labdien webināra skatītāji šajā trešdienas pēcpusdienā. Jūs skatāties webināru par biznesa iespējām Ziemeļa Amerikas tirgus apgūšanai, kā iespējas veidot sadarbību tur un pielietojamās stratēģijas. Šo webināru mēs organizējam kopā ar Kingford Consulting uzņēmumu, kuram ir plaša pieredze Ziemeļa Amerikas tirgos. Šodien jūs dzirdēsiet prezentācijas gan no Andrew Penis, kas ir Kingsport Consulting dibinātājs, un arī Jeļena Franko Kingsport Consulting Eiropas filiāls vadītāji. Man sauc Filips Talbergs un esmu Lijā eksporta veicināšanas nodeļas vadītājs. Sākumā varbūt vēlos nedaudz vēlreiz atgādināt par pieejamo atbalstu, ko Lijā var sniegt un ko Latvijas uzņēmēji var izmantot savus eksporta spējas veicināšanai un attīstīšanai. Un pavisam īsti varbūt vēlreiz atgādināt par tām iespējām prezentācijā, ko iespējams varbūt arī daudzi no jums ir iepriekš jau redzējuši mūsu iepriekš veidotajos webināros. Tātad startautiskās konkurētas spējas veicināšanas atbalsta programma kopš augusta beigām ir atkal darbojās un ir pieejama uzņēmumiem kā atbalsta instruments eksporta veicināšanai. Kopumā līdz 23. gada beigām valsts ir atvēlējusi 22,4 miljonus eiro, kur 3,8 ir atvēlēt tieši turismu. Nozarēji savukārt 18,6 miljoni ir tieši uzņēmē darbībai. Un šie 18,6 sadalās attiecīgi jau 7,8 miljonu eiro, kas ir pieejami grantu veidā, un arī lijā eksporta pakalpojumiem 10,8 miljonu. Tālāk turpināšu tieši ar šo sadaļu, kas ir 10,8, un pēc tam arī pieskaršos šai sadaļai, kas ir grantu veidot pieejama uzņēmējiem eksporta veicināšanai. Mēs, protams, turpinām ar to, kas ir iepriekšējos gados aktīvi ir nodrošināts no Lijā puses, gan Lijā Latvijas nacionālie stendi dažādās nozaru izstādēs. Mēs ļoti ceram, ka ar nākamo gadu arvien vairāk Eiropā atsāksies startautiskās izstādes un jau tagad gatavojamies tām nozaru izstādēm, kas ir paredzētas gan janvārī, februārī un martā. Plānojam arī, protams, nodrošināt tirsniecības misijas un valsts amatpersonu vizītes līdz, protams, brīdim, ka tas būs iespējams. Tas, kas noteikti varētu vairākiem uzņēmumiem interesēt, ir arī ražotņu produktu atbilstības novērtēšana, jeb šī certificēšana, atbalsts certificēšanai, kur pieejamais atbalsts ir pat līdz 80%, līdz 25 tūkstošiem eiro vienam uzņēmumam gadā. Tad šī atbalsta aktivitāte ir šobrīd jau pieejama. Protams, arī nodrošinām Latvijas dienas, akcentējam Latvijas nozaru un komersantu produktus un pakalpojumus ārvalstīs. Vēlamies strādāt ar uzņēmumiem padzirināti, vēlamies sniegt plaša spektra pakalpojumus uzņēmumiem, lai palīdzētu pēc iespējas ātrāk atgriezties eksporta tirgos un arī atrast jaunas iespējas. Mūsu lijā pārstāvniecība darbība arī turpina strādāt un ir bijušas vairākas izmaiņas, ir kādas pārstāvniecības aizvērts cietas, savukārt ir plānojami arī jaunas vērta vaļā, ko, piemēram, ir sākus strādāt mūsu pārstāvniecībā Dienvidu Korejā, un arī tuvākajā laikā arī strādāsim pie pārējo pārstāvniecību atvēršanas. Tas, kas ir jauns nācis klāt, ir šis plānotais atbalsts 50% apmērā tieši digitālo mārketingu pakalpojumu atbalsta aktivitātēs. Zinu, ka šī aktivitāte ir vairākiem uzņēmējiem tiešām ir interesanta un būtu nodarīga. Mēs pie tā aktīvi strādājam un plānojam, ka mēs varēsim izsludināt pieteikšanos jau šī gada otrajā pusē. Noteikti šobrīd aktīvi sadarbība gan ar potenciālajiem aģentūrām, kas šādas pakalpojums varētu uzņēmumiem 
sniegu. Protams, organizēsim eksporta prasmu apmācības, apmācības un arī šādu veidu seminārus kā šodien, un strādāsim arī turpmāk pie kādu ārvalstu iepircēju vai aģentu vizītēm šeit Latvijā, ko arī iepriekš dažādus veidos un pasākumos esam nodrošinājuši. Esam atvērti uzņēmumiem, uzņēmumu vajadzībām par kādu tirgu pēdījumu nodrošināšanu. Esam sadarbībā ar nozaru asociācijām identificējuši arī kādas vajadzības, kas būtu nozarei svarīgi uzzināt. Tā kā droši varat mūsu eksporta veicināšanas nodaļu informēt par tām tirgus pētījumu vajadzībām, kas tieši varbūt jums specifiski ir nepieciešams. Esam gatavi arī meklēt pēc profesionālāku konsultantu iepirkšanas, lai tādā veidā palīdzētu Latvijas uzņēmumiem. Un arī šādā veidā mēs gribam palīdzēt Latvijas uzņēmumiem, kā piemēram šodien šajā webinārā, kur caur kā jūs dzirdēsiet arī vēlāk, kā ārvalstu konsultanti var palīdzēt jums daudz efektīvāk un veiksmīgāk atrast sadarbības partnerus un nonākt līdz tiešām reāliem pasūtījumiem vai noslēgtiem eksporta līgumiem. Plānojam, ka arī mēģināsim palīdzēt uzņēmumiem nodrošināt jaunu produktu testēšanu tieši eksporta tirgos arī cauru šo nozaras profesionāļu vai iepircēju, viedokli, lai pēc iespējas labāk mēs Latvijas ražotājiem varam palīdzēt sākt, uzsākt eksportu jaunā tirgu, varbūt vēl nezināmā tirgu. Plānojam arī darbu pie reālā laika eksporta platformas nodrošināšanas Latvijas uzņēmumiem un arī tieši saistas eksporta risinājumiem kakatonu pasākumu nodrošināšanā. Tagad vēlos tiešām pieskarties tajā sadaļā, kas ir atbalsts kā grantu veidā, un šeit ir atkal uzsver lietu uz to, ka uzņēmumiem tā pieeja, kā mēs šobrīd mainam un aicinām Latvijas uzņēmumus iesniegt savus eksporta stratēģijas un plānus konkrētajiem kalendāriem gadam. Ja mēs skatāmies uz šo gadu, tad attiecīgi uzņēmumam šajā gadā ir pieejami 20 tūkstoši eiro atbalsta veidā ar 50% atbalsta intensitāte. Jā, ir nodefinētas konkrētas lietas, kas ir uzņēmumiem pieejams, kuras tūlīt sekos nākamajos slaidos. Pieteikums pie eksporta plānus jūs varat jau tagad iesniegt arī par tām aktivitātēm, kas ir bijušas varbūt trīs mēnešus uz atpakaļu, un tās iekļaut un arī pretendēt uz šo atbalstu. Bet tas, ko vēlos tiešām akcentēt, ir šis kalendārais gads, ir nākamais atkal gads, un atkal jūs iesniedzat jaunu eksporta plānu par nākamo gadu un tām plānotajiem aktivitātēm, ko jūs esat paredzējuši, piemēram, nākamajiem gadiem. Tad sekojoši ir šīs būtībā astoņas aktivitātes uzņēmumiem, kas ir pieejamas ar šo atbalsta intensitāti, kur uzņēmums var apgūt šos 20 tūkstošus eiro vienu kalendārā gadu ietvaros, ir kā jau arī iepriekš ir bijis, ir dalība startautiskajās izstādēs ar jūsu individuālo stendu vai arī ar kopstendu kopā ar vairākiem citiem uzņēmumiem. Tātad atbalsts ir tieši dalībai izstādē, stenda konstrukcijas noma no izstādes organizatora, kā arī dalības maksa vai citas izmaksas, ko var nodrošināt šī izstāde. Tātad atbalsta intensitāte lielākajā daļā šeit ir 50%. Nākamais ir dalība konferencēs formos ārvalstīs. Līdz šim ir varbūt bijis tikai dalība ar individuālo stendu, tā kā konferencē. Šobrīd arī mēs pavaram iespēju, ka arī var braukt divi dalībnieki nevairāk kā divas reizes gadā uz konferencēm vai forumiem ārvalstīs kā klausītāji atbalstāmā darbība ir dalības maksa konferencē vai forumā. Nākamais ir dalība kontaktbiržās ārvalstīs vai kontaktbiržās tieši saistē, un šeit arī ir dalības maksa nevairāk kā diviem dalībniekiem. 
Tālāk ir dalības startautiskās digitālās nozēmu platformās vai digitālās izstādēs. Mēs redzam, ka ar vien vairāk šādi piedāvājumi ir pieejami. Tā kā ir šīs, šī iespēja arī piedalīties šādos platformās vai digitālās izstādēs. Šeit ierobežojums ir ne vairāk kā trīs platformas vienu kalendāru gadu laikā. Un uzsvars ir tiešām par platformām ir tieši nozares un, un, un tas, ka Šī platforma tā nav kaut kādā, kas nodrošina varbūt tiešo tirsniecību, kā piemēram Amazon tirsniecības platforma. Ja? Tātad būtībā ar platforma, kur ir konkrētai nozarei, kur uzņēmums var meklēt sadarbības partners. Produktu un pakalpojumu pielāgošana ārvalsts tirgiem, tas arī ir jauns veids, kā vēlamies palīdzēt uzņēmumiem, gan ar mārketingu teksta pielāgošanu, eksportu tirgumu, tieši tulkošana. Nākamais ir etiķešu vai iepakojuma dizaina izstrāde un pielāgošana, un trešais ir preču zīmes reģistrēšana. Un šeit kopumā par šo punktu ir ierobežojums ne vairāk kā 2000 eiro, ko varat saņemt atbalstā, tātad kopā jūs varat iztērēt arī 4000 un saņemt 2000, vai arī, ja jūs vairāk iztērēt šajā punktā, Tiksim, 5000 ir maksimālais, ko jūs varat atgūt, ir šie 2000 par šo konkrēto punktu viena kalendārā gada ietvaros. Tāpat tās esam paredzējuši atbalstu publicitātei drukātajos vai digitālajos ārvalstu specializētajos nozaru mēdījos, vai tā ir žurnāls, nozaru žurnāls vai kaut kāds speciāls nozars portāls, kur attiecīgi uzņēmums vēlas izvietot savu reklāmu. Un šeit arī ir griesti nevairāk kā 2000 eiro atbalstā, ko jūs varat saņemt vienu kalendārā gada ietvaros. Nākamais ir telemārketinga pakalpojuma nozaru ārvalstu partneru sadarbības smeklēšanai. Tieši, ka jūs varat algot šos ārvalstu kompānijas, kuras var priekš jums meklēt sadarbības partnerus. Un šeit arī ir ierobežojums nevairāk kā 2000 eiro tiksim, līgums ar šo Marketele marketing kompāniju par, par attiecīgi jūsu partneru, potenciālo partneru uzrunāšanu un sameklēšanu. Un pēdējais, kas ir dalības tarptautiskajās nozaru asociācijās, kas arī ir klāt nācis un esmu sapratuši, ka vairāk uzņēmumi piedalās, ja ņem dalību kādās tarptautiskās nozaru asociācijās, šeit mēs esam veidojuši sārakstu ar šīm asociācijām, kuras mēs arī pievienosim vēl papildus klāt, Kurs, kuras būs nodefinētas jau iepriekš. Un, un šeit arī ir nosacījums, ka nevairāk kā 2000 kā dalības maksa eiro jūs varat saņemt kā atbalstu viena, kā viena kalendārā gada ietvaros. Īsumā tas no manas puses par SKV atbalstu programmu būtu izstāstīts un, un, un tikai vēlos tiešām vēl akcentēt šo, kad aicinu izmantot iespēju sekot lijā, līdzi lijā jaunumiem, lai nepalaistu garām nec par šādiem semināriem, fórumiem vai pieteikšanos uz izstādēm, tirsniecības misijām vai arī tās citiem, citām aktivitātēm. Tad varat pieteikties uz tiknedēļas pirmdienā mēs izsūtam uzņēmējiem lijā jaunums, kur esam akcentējuši šos šos svarīgākās lietas koncentrētā veidā. Tāpat tās cauri Eiropas biznesa atbalstu tīklu esam apkopoši arī klāšu informāciju par pieejamām kontaktu biržām, kas arī ir pieejams tiešsaistē. Un bez šābām eksporta veicināšanas nodeļa esam atvērti atbildēt uz jautājumiem, palīdzēt noskaidrot nepieciešamo informāciju. Jo, ja dažkārt uzņēmumiem varbūt ir trūksta informācija, kādā asociācijā, kādā valstī iestāties, vai varbūt uzzināt, kurš būtu labākais nozeres mēdīs, kurā varbūt kādu reklāmu iegādāties, vai uzzināt informāciju par kaut kādiem tiešām svarīgiem nozeres platformām, digitālām platformām, kādā konkrētā tirgu. Mūsu pārstāvniec, ar mūsu pārstāvniecībā mēs šādu informāciju varam censties priekš jums sagatavot. Paldies jums vēlreiz par, inf, par, par uzmanību un tālāk jau tad es nododu vārdu Jeļenai un par, par šo iespēju, ko sniedz Kingsport konsultīgu uzdevums. Paldies jums!
All right. Hello, everyone. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Good. So, um, well, my name is Elena. Some of you know me. Some of the names are familiar. Um, I come from Latvia and I left Latvia 11 years ago. So um, I had a long journey. I worked in the, uh, in the food industry doing export from Denmark uh, to, to Scandinavia, um, to retail chains and to Benelux countries after which I founded my own supplement uh, business um, and also established it here in Denmark. I'm at the moment in Denmark, uh, where Kingsley Consulting is um, having its European office. I also worked with Leah with the startup department. So some of you I have met um, and talked to. Um, so some of you um, might recognize me as well. And I'm happy that you joined. Thank you, thank you very much for that. Um, well, I joined Kingsford simply because I enjoy and I sincerely love entrepreneurship. I love new ideas and I love to, to, to work with different products and uncover the customer journey. So get to know your customer, your company's customer uh, in the best way and try to implement it to your services. So when all this is happening, when you know your customer best, the company exceeds. We've seen it over and over again. So that's shortly about me. Um, over to you, Andrew, please present yourself. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for inviting us into your, your homes, your offices, or wherever you may be at the moment. Uh, I'm in my home office, as you might see. I spent 20 years in uh, manufacturing and technology, including uh, satellite, uh, cellular, internet, uh, photon pumps, and just about everything you can imagine. And then for the last 20 years, I've been operating Kingsford Consulting. And we've worked with hundreds of companies, uh, mostly across North America, helping them establish, helping them grow into this fabulous, huge market that we have here. Uh, we do uh, business uh, development work. We help companies with acquisitions. We help companies with their overall business strategy. And I'm so pleased today that uh, Philip's team has been able to uh, gather all of you today to look at coming to North America. Uh, it is a, a fantastic opportunity and, a, and uh, I'm so keen to share with you what we can help you do and, and where you can grow your businesses. Right. So I'm going to share a little presentation with you. Um, so I will share my screen. Just a moment, sorry. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. I assume you could see my screen now. Yeah. Can you see the presentation? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. all right. Okay, so we're talking North America now, okay? And absolutely, for a Latvian company to go to North America, it's a step, it's a huge step, okay? So, I know Latvia quite well, and I know the challenges of a typical European company, especially Latvian companies. So I would like to kind of set up the stage and speak about four very, very important things which you have to bear in mind. So the first one, going to North America, going to Canada and the USA, it's a growth, it's a transatlantic growth. Now, there is two types of you. One of you, uh, some of you are startups, that's a different dynamic. That's a different kind of company. You are thinking about the world stage from the day one and you, you make your product competing globally right away from the beginning. So in your, in your case, um, it's a different game. You know, you need to shape up. There is things to do as well, but there are also some of you here at the moment, um, who are growing organically. Okay. So they're in Latvia, they are exporting, let's say to Lithuania, they tried Estonia, they tried the immediate market, they tried Scandinavia and some of it. And of course, there is this factor that everywhere you go, if you go Germany, you have to speak German, you go Holland, you speak Dutch, you go Denmark, you speak Danish. Europe is massive, but Europe is uh, a little bit limited linguistically, even though people are speaking English and it's different culture. So anyways, so that's a step. Um, and you have to like realize um, that you have to already, um, very important thing is that you have to, uh, you have to try 
you are already exporting. So you try to be in your neighbor market and you know a bit of an export. So that will be a logical step to go transatlantic, to make that step, okay? Another thing uh, to prepare you thinking about North America is transparency. So we would like you to be a transparent, um, a transparent company. What I mean by it is open, is honest, is easy to do business. Um, I've been, by the way, thank you very much for all your questions and I've been looking through them. One of you have asked me, what's the cultural difference um, from Europe, let's say, and North America? So that is the key. Uh, the, the key difference is transparency. So in North America, when you do business, um, you get a degree of trust right away. So people give you a chance. If your offer is interesting, um, if they generally would listen and you will have a degree of trust, uh, a dialogue. In Europe, people are slightly more reserved in the beginning and you build the trust along when you work with each other. But the key factor of building trust is being open, vulnerable, open, dynamic, considering different scenarios. Um, so that's, that's very important. And the other thing about going to North America is you have to have a good command of English, okay? So I'm not saying having a um, native fluency, I'm saying being able to speak, understanding, being able to handle immediate responses, especially when you start the export, being able to react on things quick, being, uh, being, being right there on top. And as well, you have to be used to uh, dealing with, uh, with the other CEOs. So as, as a matter of fact, uh, talking about building trust, you'll be dealing, CEOs like to speak to CEOs. So um, if, if, you, if you send your sales rep to, to handle everything, all transatlantic, yes, it can happen, but it's better if you have that close connection uh, between other business leaders. Okay, so you, you have to, um, yeah, have it, have it in check. Okay, so we, we bear it in mind. Right. So I just want to talk uh, a little bit up, um, about two approaches to coming to North America. Um, many companies say, well, gee, let's see if we can get one sale, one deal. And once we get that one deal, we'll build from there. And too often what happens, they get one deal, but they don't get a second deal. It's, it's like fishing, you know, you can get lucky once, but unless you have a strategic plan in order to build a stream of revenue, you're unlikely to be successful. So if, you're, if you are serious about coming to North America, you need to um, be very, very thoughtful about it, very methodical about it, um, and recognize that what you're selling in North America may be different from what you're selling locally. Locally, you might have a broad range of products uh, that you can sell to, to, to customers. But when you're coming into a new market, you need to find the perfect product and aim it very strategically, like, like the archer here, aim it very strategically at a specific market space. And once you're able to get repeat sales of that specific target, then you can widen your product base into those new markets. And that's where the research is required to figure out what is that core product that you can sell and where are you going to sell it to you end up with a very efficient process and a very successful process rather than just throwing something across the ocean and saying, maybe someone will buy it. Yeah. Just to illustrate Andrew's point, uh, I've got the picture here on the right. This is um, a machine shop from Ventspils. Um, uh, and, and you know, machine shop, some of you are from the metal industry. I think three of you, so it will be interesting for you to listen is, um, have a mindset of we can do it all right so we can make a conveyor belt i can make a, i can produce a, a supermarket stand you know from the metal i can make a little part in the car so i can do it all but that doesn't function as long as you meet a company which is best in the world in the conveyor belts for the supermarket chains you don't stand a chance that's why yes you can do it in your local market but you have to be very clear about what it is that product which you're gonna send across the ocean, that product or service, some of you doing service, so across the ocean, and you build a story around it, and you, 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 you show your strength, you know, of, and your capabilities, your ability to produce it, then you're successful, okay? So, so why North America, okay? Why North America? Obviously, one of the things is that it's the biggest market in the world, right? We're, we are not even arguing with that. 
it is the biggest market in the world. It, it imports a lot of goods, it exports as well. Currently, if we talk USA, USA imports uh, more things than it actually sends out, yeah? So um, North America is 300 times as big as Latvia. Okay, Latvia is small, it's tiny. So obviously it's, uh, it's quite, a <laughs> quite a difference. There is 365 million people. There is the fact of what I started to talk about is a language, is English. So that's why if, if you have a good command of English, it, it, it will flow, the communication will flow. Um, it's four and, a, four and a half time zones. Uh, I don't know if you were aware. So for example, if you're in California and Florida, there is four and a, or, or if you're in Toronto in Ottawa, Andrew is in Ottawa, and if we go to Vancouver, there will be a time zone difference um, to be three hours, yeah. yeah, three hours to be aware of. So I like that slide because here you see US on the left and you see Canada on the right, and perhaps you, you may have seen it before. It talks about GDP, a growth domestic product. And if you, if you see United States, every state represents the, the economy, the GDP of the state, in comparison with the GDP of other countries, all right? So I, I assume you see my mouse. For example, California has the biggest economy in the United States, and it, it's, uh, the, the, the GDP is as big as Brazil. So if you look at U US, you, you should consider, of course, California, and you should also consider here runs the Mississippi River, east of Mississippi River. It's a, it's a big economy here. So you've got Florida, the GDP of Florida is, um, is compared to the, the Dutch, the Netherlands, you've got New York. Um, this zone is interesting. And frankly, you've got Canada here and you've got Ontario and you've got Br British Columbia. So we've got Vancouver here and you've got Toronto and Ottawa in Ontario. Frankly, um, the distance between Toronto um, and New York. So if you go from Toronto to New York, it's like the distance from Riga to Warsaw to the capital of Poland. So it's I don't know how many hours, like six, six hours drive, is it? Uh, it's more or less that. So about six, yeah. Yeah, about six hours drive. So, sorry. So what I'm saying is, uh, if you establish your business, say in Canada, the U.S. is right there, is south, um, is south of the border, and it's it's a um, distance-wise not as the distance-wise is high, and the, the the transition will be smooth as well. It's the, uh, just to continue on that, Elena, it, it is the world's largest single language market. Uh, so in terms of packaging, printing, communications, promotion, advertising, selling, supporting, customer service, it's one market and it makes it so much easier. And if you are east of the Mississippi, um, the nice thing about that is the time zones overlap. So the business, the business day uh, in, in Latvia is late afternoon when it's early morning on the East Coast. And North Americans start fairly early, you know, eight o'clock, 7.30 in the morning is not unusual at all. So you can, you can do business very easily with that part of the world. Yep. Uh, the other thing that's interesting with, uh, actually just to go back to that slide, uh, the other thing that's interesting with Canada is that um, we see ourselves as half European and half American. We're, we're kind of in between, and it gives us a, um, an ability to relate to, to both sides very easily. And uh, Americans are, are extremely friendly with Canada. Um, there was a, a, uh, uh, recently, there was a, a large tariff put on aluminum products globally going into the U.S. Uh, and then at the last minute, the U.S. said, no, no, but Canadian aluminum, it's okay. So we have a special relationship, probably the most special relationship with the U.S., which gives us that, uh, that bridge into the U.S. market. So as researchers, as, as people doing development work, it really is one market for us and obviously one market for our clients. Um, one of the advantages of a home office is that occasionally my dog will try to come into my office. So just to avoid the door being scratched. Oh. All right. So, okay. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um, so that's why you should come to North America, but why should you come now? Why is now the best time to do that? And if you think about it, there, there are three or four key things happening at the moment. We've got politics undeniably. Uh, with China, with Europe, with the U.S., uh, all jockeying for position with tariff borders and issues. 
Um, we've got a, a pandemic, obviously, that has completely changed the way the world operates and thinks. And we've got technology adoption and we've got digital natives who are now starting to run businesses. So we're, we're moving into uh, an environment where business is no longer constrained by the walls of an office. The same way that we're talking to you today, uh, we can be talking with anybody anywhere in the world, uh, whether it's in their home, their office, uh, any time zone, as long as we get up early enough. So the concept of an office constraining where you sell to, and importantly, where you buy from, is changing. The people that move quickly on this opportunity will do very, very well. Um, you know, this week I've had meetings in uh, Argentina, in Denmark, in Montreal, in Paris, in South America. Um, and uh, six months ago, that would have been inconceivable. And not only meetings, but doing business. So we can, people are closing deals, transacting business uh, over video the way we are today. So with all of that happening in the world, your opportunity to reach out and, and create new relationships is huge. With, as you can see on this slide, we're trying to explain here that the supply chains are changing. So certainly people in the hard goods industry or services industry uh, have a great opportunity. The, for example, the US, North America's reliance on the Chinese market is shifting. Uh, there, was a, there are, are potential tariff problems, potential political problems, and certainly logistics problems. So manufacturers, assemblers, whether it's automotive or, or whatever, are looking to make their supply chain more solid. So as I say, the, the old order has become unglued, and it's in the process of reorganizing itself. And that is absolutely the best time for a new entrant to come into the market demonstrate what they can do and become part of the, the new order, which will establish itself over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. So it's the perfect time. I mean, we, we work with businesses every single day. Honestly, from our perspective, we are the most busy, haven't we, Andrew? Been oh, lately, pretty... ever since coronavirus uh, was breaking up, everybody are hungry for business everybody are hungry for opportunities and here in this slide um it's just one of the founders of the danish company he's just saying henrik uh, he's saying that the meetings during the coronavirus pandemic um, the virtual meetings have been disciplined have been structured and are more efficient than otherwise i'm sure you have noticed that before the ones of you who tries and one more thing to be aware of is that the ceos are more available so they don't have, they're not booked up for meetings. They're not, you know, <laughs> poked by their colleagues. They're there, they're available. And that's why it's your chance to make the move is now. Yeah, so. and not only that, you don't have to travel. Or you yeah, can, absolutely. first of all, but you don't need to. So you can do six uh, high level CEO calls in one day from your office in Latvia. Yeah. Uh, whereas in the past, that might have taken you two weeks of travel. So the, the efficiency, is, 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 it's, it's amazing. It's, it's absolutely the best time to get out there. And you know, to, the demand hasn't slacked off. We have clients in so many vertical markets that are just going full out. People yep. are still eating, people are still buying houses, people are still moving. Uh, factories are going up, warehousing is, is expanding. It, it is a boom market. Certainly the hospitality and the, the retail industries are being completely transformed, but everything else is going full out. And not only is it going full out, it's being fueled by government investments in infrastructure, uh, and infrastructure and services. So it's a, it's a fantastic time to be in business. The other thing, the companies, the businesses who have, which environment, you know, have changed significantly, they are reinventing themselves. So that's part of my, our job is that, to guide them and to, to shift their services, to see what you know, the compilation of people could do best and how can they adapt to new market, what other service they can offer. So we, we are, we are helping them to, to look into what kind of business, because sometimes you associate yourself with one uh, certain industry or, or, or service type, but then if you think about it, there's always opportunity way, how you can angle and how you can reach the market if it makes sense. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we offer to you is in case 
um, you haven't tried North America before, in case you're not exporting yet there, to come to Canada, to come to Canada first. Simply, frankly, because first of all, it's half European and half American. People are friendly. Canada is politically stable. Okay, a Andrew probably will say Canada is boring. <laughs> Nothing is happening. No, but, uh, our politics, our politics are boring. Our po politics, <laughs> yeah, politics. Our business, po recreation, life. No, that's a fantastic place to be if you like winter. Yeah, well, yeah, the winter. <laughs> so, uh, so start in Canada. The other thing is that it's the CETA, uh, which is there to facilitate you. And what CETA is, um, just in short, it's, it's, the, it's a zero custom duty. So you, you've got your source price, you've got your margin, you've got your logistics, and, and you've got zero tariff. Uh, so you, your price could be competitive. So I just wanted to tell you an example because I know some of you are from the from the wood industry okay so in florida um in i mean all in all we'll be covering it in the presentation but uh houses in canada are typically in wood so wooden houses um and it's a it's a very used material so in florida uh companies are buying wood uh, the clts cross laminate um what is the t for timber Timber, yeah, sorry, uh, the, the cross-laminated cross timber from Germany and from Finland because, for example, shipping it from north of Canada or shipping it from, from, from California would be more expensive than buying it directly from, uh, from, from Europe. So, funny enough, so that's why even though, yes, the logistic will be a significant significant chunk there when you when you consider it, you can still be competitive uh, when you look into that. So. Start there, start in Canada, you've got the advantage, train to be in North America because the dynamics, the demands, the, the responsiveness, the way you organize yourself, it will be different. You have to be ready for it. And once you feel you're ready, you just go south of the border. You gear up for, for the States market and you're ready to go. So we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the different markets in North America. Um, for those of you who don't, who sell into the automotive industry, you know this already, uh, but the, um, you know, the largest uh, OEM, or sorry, the largest, I mean, I'll back up. We all know who the OEMs are, the GMs, the Fords, Teslas, and people like that. Um, very hard to sell directly to them unless you're a tier one supplier. So the tier ones are people like uh, Magna, who's based in Canada. They're a $20 billion company. Um, uh, other companies like Continental, uh, Denso, Bosch, um, Panasonic Automotive Group, and so on. The 10th largest is only $5 billion in sales to the OEMs. So those are tier ones. Uh, you might be large enough to sell to a tier two, um, or you might be large enough to sell to a tier three. It really depends on where you come in, whether you're a, a direct supplier or a supplier to the supplier or a supplier to the supplier to the supplier. Um, it's a, it, it is a very large market. Uh, it is stable. It is growing. Uh, depending on what you make, could be a great opportunity. Uh, you can see here, these are, are where the various plants are located. They tend to follow uh, population, uh, land price, um, and um, um, where the, 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 the markets are that they can sell to. Um, it is a... Um, a difficult market in the sense of logistics because it's assembly line driven. So if you are not able to uh, commit and provide product on a really a just-in-time basis, then you're in trouble. I used to work in the uh, one of the industries was the uh, truck uh, construction, class eight truck. Uh, we were supplier to Mack trucks that you may know of. And boy, if we were late on a shipment, it was painful because we'd shut down the assembly line. So. If you are going after the automotive market, you need to think very carefully about your logistics flow and how you would manage that. And the other one more note that I just want to add is that from the industry, from this industry, from my experience, is that just to show you how integrated Canada and US trade is in this sector, and not only is that like a bolt, the typical bolt and knob in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a car would travel seven to eight times across the border on average before yeah. the car goes away from the assembly line. So. Canada and the U.S. do have an agreement on automotive parts, which allows pieces to move backwards and forwards across the border. So it's really the supply chain encompasses all of North America. Uh, so depending on where you get into that, you're quite uh, able to have that product move anywhere in the continent. So it's a, it's a continent-wide industry.
So for those of you who are in the metal um, producing industry, let's say, who are in that industry, you could consider, or maybe you're already in it, but it's certainly an opportunity. And not only, uh, not only that, but uh, mainly I would say you could, you could, you could try out uh, uh, that industry. Now, the mining industry is another one that is uh, very, very strong in Canada. In fact, Toronto is effectively the world's capital for mining. Uh, with the Toronto Stock Exchange uh, hosting uh, the vast majority of mining stocks. Uh, and then the, the smaller mining companies are typically on the Vancouver Stock Exchange out on the west coast of Canada. Um, you can see here from the chart the kind of things that, uh, that, that are dug out of, uh, out of the ground. Um, there are something like 200 mines uh, in uh, producing mines in Canada. Uh, if you're on the engineering services side, then there are many, many more mines that are planned or, or uh, being explored. Uh, mining is, is in a huge transition. Uh, Canada is somewhere near the front or the forefront of those changes. We're talking about uh, automation. Uh, mines are going deeper. They have to be more energy efficient. They have to be safer. They have to be healthier. Uh, we're very concerned about what we call social license, which has to do with our impact on the environment and our impact on the local communities. Uh, and uh, First Nations rights and these kinds of things. So there's a whole uh, series of changes that are happening in the mining industry. And with change, there's opportunity. Uh, we have a number of clients in the mining sector and um, we're talking about uh, a whole mine approach. So when a mine is designed and thought through, it considers all aspects. Um, I'll, I'll read my notes. Uh, electrification, waste reduction, continuous process, remote locations, consistent production, real-time knowledge, social license, and environmental awareness. These are some of the changes that are moving through the mining industry. And because of the head offices being located here in Canada, a successful relationship with the company can then expand internationally from the, from the uh, Canadian head office. Yeah, I just want to add to that, is that um, sometimes, from my experience, um, companies tend to think that Oh, mining industry. I have to be in the mining industry to sell to mining industry. It's absolutely not true. So you can consider mining as an end customer, as a, as a, you know, uh, yeah, as an end consumer. So you can you can be a, a software company and you can you can produce drones, for example. You can be a startup having a drones, and servicing mining industry. You could be again a machine shop, and you could. Uh, I was just having a slide here. I love this picture of this machine and you see these little parts here which go uh, go in the ground and dig, dig I think they're breaking the stone breaking the rock isn't it what they're doing so you could produce that part uh, that little part of that machine that could be your opportunity and uh, or there's a fantastic conveyor belt you know which which you can design and manufacture and that would be your service that would be the way you can enter that industry so just saying that consider that consider this opportunity, consider your capabilities, and there is a massive market there. Um, and also the mining companies, they tend to be very integrated. So if, if one company would be in Canada, they would have several locations. They will be also connected to the US companies and Latin America. Uh, so so that's, that's the world by itself, uh, which you could service. That would be your entry point. Mm -hmm. The... Um... As we were saying earlier, the, every industry, apart from hospitality and retail, is expanding dramatically. Um, the, the construction industry is forecast to grow at something like 8.4% on average over the next four years. Uh, it should be worth about two and a half, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, two and a half trillion dollars in, in uh, total uh, expenditures. So it, it is a massive industry. Um, you know, residential is growing at 6%, commercial is growing at 9%, infrastructure is growing at 4%. And these numbers are as of this month, That's, those are current forecasts, so they're, they're taking COVID into consideration. Um, all of the expenditures now are uh, government investments, both in Canada and the US, are looking at infrastructure investments to stimulate the economy. That infrastructure is going to be uh, affordable housing, it's going to be roads and uh, railways, bridges, uh, water systems. Uh, 
Um, and it's going to be technology because broadband uh, access, 5G broadband access, satellite access is going to be crucial as we move forward as an economy. So whether you're in, in the construction industry, the hard goods industry, the software industry, the technology industry, it is really going to be a massive set of expansions. Uh, and as Elena said earlier, and the, the, the images here, the, the one on the right, uh, I believe that's a, a, a cross laminated timber structure. So it's a solid wood building. The one on the left uh, is a, a frame building, which is typically how most uh, residential and small uh, size buildings are put together. But larger buildings predominantly are, are built in, in concrete using different methodologies to put the buildings up. Uh, we have a number of clients in the construction sector and uh, the opportunities, uh, again, are, are, are huge. The construction industry is also going through a transition from uh, sort of mom and pop old style building into fully integrated systems using building information management systems, using drones, using different sorts of technologies to uh, ensure that the buildings are put up properly. And more importantly, from a business point of view, are put up most efficiently. So any sort of technology or solutions in that area have an, I won't say an open market, but certainly the market is ready to listen to what it is that you have. If I'm not wrong, there's a few designers who are listening now to us and there is one BIM specialist. So that's why it will be a BIM specialist who will be quite interesting for you for that. <laughs> that yeah, and and yeah. certainly the, the very large companies are, have some sort of BIM solution going. Uh, but I think there's a huge opportunity in the, in the smaller and mid-range companies that are curious but haven't quite figured out how to play that game yet. Right. So there is just a few, a few areas we drew, the areas of our expertise say that, right? Uh, where, where we work, which we know best, and we connect companies, we try... Um, to set up their business and to show them the opportunities uh, so you could see. Uh, that's, of course, a very quick presentation. Um, but over the, last, uh, over the last 20 years, I have to say we have worked in just about every vertical market one way or another. Either our client is in that market or they want to sell into those markets. Uh, so when, no matter what product or service you have, I'd really like to chat with you about what you might want to do in North America. And I'm sure that we, we've got some common, uh, common references, common points of contact that we could uh, give you some ideas on. Right. And we have a few of you um, who would chat with us later today, who would chat with us on Thursday. We are still open on Friday, so we still um, have some slots available. Please write to, to me directly or write to LEA representatives, um, book a time with us. Um, and we can have a um, brainstorming, we can have CEO situation, CEO experience, probably you already tried to go to North America, maybe you tried, maybe you have a bad experience going to other European countries. We can talk through that and we can, we can, you, we can share some ideas, okay, about, about the future, about the possibilities um, and the way. I also would like to, to say to you that um, if you had an experience working with consultants in the past, there is different types and the way we work, we have boots on the ground. Okay. So we, we help you to, to get to the bias. We represent you. We sometimes talk to the bias. We sometimes talk together with you. We also work um, with your company and analyze the situation, trying to understand what drives this comp what, what drives you, what are your strengths? So we go through internal processes. So we work in a very, how to say in a very, um, holistic yeah. way we consider so we don't have any um, how do you call it generalist approach and we kind of like sell North America no we really work individually and we devote time to 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 you to the company to really understand the strengths and try to try to identify the target market and the customer we, we we're, we're not here this morning or sorry this afternoon uh, to you know we, we don't want to um, take on any projects that aren't going to be successful. What we really want to do is help companies achieve new clients and build a, a new stream of business. Um, somebody said to me once, well, the last thing I want is a plan. Uh, what I want is business. And that's our approach too. The last thing we want to do is write a business plan for you. 
What we really want to do is help you grow your business and get new clients and, and expand. Yeah. So here are some, some of the clients and these guys, um, software, right, Andrew? So yeah, they, uh, when we first met them, they had 14 employees and, uh, I think they were scratching about $3 million in sales. Uh, they sell, um, software to the uh, retail industry, uh, point of sale software is, is the basis of their product. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, I'm not sure if this is the, that's the Toronto Stock Exchange. Stock Exchange, yeah. They just listed on the New York Stock Exchange. They currently, uh, they've, they've grown from the 14 employees. They now have 900 employees and their market value is 4.3 billion US dollars. Uh, so again, it's, it's, for, for these folks, it was a question of market focus. It was a, market, yeah. a question of choosing the right market segments and then putting the right strategies together, both direct sales, indirect sales, and, and digital sales in order to build their business. And uh, my, my friend uh, Dax uh, De Silva um, has done a fabulous job leading this company to, okay. to success. <laughs> um, another company that we've been working with for probably about 10 years is a company called Best Tech. Uh, as you can tell by the photograph, they're in a slightly different business. Uh, these folks are mining engineers, and we've helped them expand from a, a mining business in Sudbury with, uh, gosh, I think they had about 30 employees. They've got close to uh, 150 employees now, and they've expanded beyond just mining, uh, mining uh, technologies into designing mines, uh, power systems, uh, ecology, uh, environmental monitoring and so on. So they've expanded, they've built their relationships with the mines and expanded horizontally and expanded across Canada. And we're also working on two acquisitions. Well, can I say that? Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> we're helping them expand through acquisitions by identifying the perfect targets and, and initiating the, uh, the conversation so that they can grow strategically. Um, there's another company that we've worked with called uh, Aganova and Aganova is in Spain. Uh, and what they do is they, that little ball you see on the right, they drop it down into a water main. And as it travels through the water main, it listens for leaks. And uh, so it allows them to map the location and the volume of water that is leaking through holes in the pipes. And then the, the municipality can figure out the best way to fix it. Uh, so we, again, we help them come to North America. We, we, we researched the entire market. We found out that um, water pipes installed in the 1920s used a certain kind of iron that rots out in about 70 years. So we were able to figure out which cities had that pipe, and yep. then those became our initial targets to, uh, for them so to solve it. This for you is an example of focus in action. The yeah. pipes from 1920s, you know, that's what you like, not, not just generally the infrastructure and things. And we're not looking at, yes, there are a lot of pipes in the city of Ottawa and it's on a, on a different city, but we're looking at specifically, um, it, it's always a success. When you identify the, the, when you focus and identify exactly the niche where you have to focus on, it, it's a success. So one of these company, Aganova specifically, that's a hardware uh, device. Lightspeed, the first example, uh, it's a software. Uh, Bestec, Bestec, they're in the resource mining industry. It's a service. It's a, it's a, it's a mix of, isn't it? It's a mix of service. So it's, I mean, they're different. The approaches are different, but we, we have capabilities and experience to address many different types of companies. So here we are. <laughs> the, well, you know, that's Andrew. Um, we have, um, this like the main consultants of our, we have a network of people um, that we have across, across USA and Canada. Um, we've got also a colleague who is now online, um, Santiago, uh, and he works, uh, he's in Montreal, but he works with uh, South America. That's why if you have a product which you're thinking about bringing to South America, we have a guy who could who could point, give you some pointers, give you some recommendation. And the other guy, Graham, um, just, he, he's very strong about looking internally. Uh, Cause sometimes, you know, yes, you're thinking growing revenue, give me sales. I want to go North America. Um, 
but sometimes you have to have a look at yourself and see what you could do different. So he's very good at um, strategic thinking and sometimes coaching and teaching, working with CEOs, how to do that. Uh, and that's also successful when, when you, they do this kind of deep work uh, together and have, and reflect on, on how, how, because, you know, we've got people we've got, right? So we got to make the best out of it. So he, he's very good at working with that. So it's different skills, uh, a compilation of different skills. So I think right. the, the next thing is to think about uh, in terms of where you might want to go from here. If there's anything in our conversation this afternoon that has interested you, then let's talk about it. And, and you know, it'd be a complimentary conversation about the North American market. And perhaps in, in 10 or 15 minutes, we can give you our, our perspective on what it is you're thinking of doing. And you might say, hmm, okay, I'm not coming to North America or maybe next year. And that's perfect. Okay, well, we'd love to, to be able to give you that feedback. Um, and uh, maybe just go back to that slide for a second, Elena. Um, also, please do contact us on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I, I accept any bona fide uh, invitation uh, and it's a way of staying connected. Uh, on our website, we do have a newsletter uh, and we send that out every, every week with ideas on business development, business growth. Uh, it's not always about business development, but it will give you a very good sense of the culture in North America. Yes. Um, and, and probably give you some very good ideas on improving your business generally. So please do register for that. It's on our website. Visit our website. Um, and finally, if it makes sense, engage with us. But all of our engagements in the, the Look West program have a first gate. And that first gate is based on a little bit of research. So yes, you'll pay us a little bit of money and we'll have a look at the market from a very high level and say, does this make sense? Are you ready? Do you have what it takes to play in North America? And if you do, is there likely a market for, your, for what it is you're selling? And if there's not, we will tell you right then, we will stop. Yeah. And if there is, then you can say, well, okay, yes, let's go ahead in which case we will build that we'll do more research we will build out a strategy for you to be successful in north america there are also um some people ask about uh, some people asked about uh, the agents and distributors yes yeah. we can absolutely connect you with the agents and distributors um however it still doesn't um rule out that you have to focus and you have to have a, a product you have to bring to the market a product that will succeed you know you have to guarantee that so in this very way few, yeah very few agents will build or create a market for you you have to do that work you have to determine where you know the 20 the the, um, the pipes from the 1920s yes they do have a dealer now but only once they could show that dealer how the business would work where the opportunity is and that dealer then sits as a middleman between the intelligence and the company and the customer uh, and choosing the right dealer is very important as well. So until yep. you know who the customers are, how they buy, yep. it's, it's foolhardy to choose a dealer uh, without knowing that. Yes, and also for success, what you have to keep in mind is that you're not aiming for a sale, a transaction, you know, one sale, two sales. You're aiming to have a market share, okay? So you know your market, you know your niche, you want to have 2% out of it. One and a half percent depends depends what kind of industry you're in and that's what you're aiming for and what do you have to do to get there so we'll, we'll help you with that to identify it here's our email addresses write us so approach to us thank you very much and i remind you that please go ahead and book some consultations we are open until the end of this week i thank you again and i'm happy to talk to those of you who booked the consultation um now so thanks a lot you have a nice day um and yeah so let's stay in touch all right thank you uh, thank you so much everybody we do appreciate your time today so we'll turn it back to uh, to leah now if uh, perhaps you folks would like to to close off the conversation yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andrew and uh, Jelena, for uh, the presentations. And I'm going to ask you 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 to
e-pasti un prezentācijas uh, tiks ievietot arī lijā mājaslapā un būs pieejami pēc uh, šī webināra. Paldies par jūsu uzmanību un uh, vai jums izdevusies šī nedēļa. Visu labu!